Glad this conference will now be you. recorded. <laughs> well, thank you all very much for uh, joining me today. Um, as we usually do, we have a couple of new faces. We have uh, some people that are almost here with us, and we have some repeat people. So, so we have a nice blend of everything. Um, as the people that have been here before know, uh, we usually have three sections to the meeting. Uh, the first section is I'll mute everybody and I'll unmute people one at a time to give you an opportunity to take a minute or two and introduce yourself to the rest of the group. Uh, hopefully, uh, the second section is those introductions will have triggered some questions from other people here in attendance. So you can ask questions of each other based on your introduction or, or offer to refer business or whatever the case may be. And then the third section is hopefully we still have a couple of minutes left after that. And we'll just open it up for general conversation. We can talk about, you know, how you see the business outlook as we finally, hopefully start to get over this coronavirus uh, thing and, and, and any other any other topics. And I will try to close the meeting somewhere between 50 to 55 minutes after the hour to give everybody five or 10 minutes to take a break, maybe grab a glass of water um, before I know a lot of people are, are stacking up these uh, video chats back to back to back. So I'll, I'll try to leave five or 10 minutes for people to take a break before you have to go to your next one. All right. So with that introduction out of the way, I think think I've muted everybody. That's right. And very first here on my list is Barbara Klein. So Barb, if you could unmute yourself from your side and take a minute or two to introduce yourself and what a good referral for you would be. Hi, everybody. I'm Barbara Klein, the love coach. I'm the owner of the best you dating and life coaching. And I am a dating and life coach and I help singles who are feeling frustrated and lonely by teaching them how to discover their own self-worth through my love story program so they can fall in love without compromising their boundaries. Um, I also run two meetup groups. One is called Self-Improvement Singles and the other is called Surviving and Thriving Divorce. And those meetings are to help people that are struggling and feeling alone and isolated as well as uh, the painful um, experiences of going through a separation and divorce. And so I am there to support people. And those things are in my information that I put in the chat. A good referral is anybody who is single, divorced, or widowed, or never married, um, who either has no clue how to go about dating online or um, or naturally, you know, organically. And uh, sorry, I got a call that was distracting. And um, the other um, thing about uh, a good referral would be somebody who has not had success on the online dating platform, because those are difficult platforms and you really need to expose yourself in ways that people might not realize. Um, or maybe poor pictures or, you know, poorly written profile information. And also, it's really good to be clear about who you're trying to attract and what you will not uh, tolerate in a relationship. So those are the things that I teach people and aid them with and so forth. So thank you very much. Glad to be here, Sal. Excellent. Thank you. And by the way, the good news about having people that have come to all of these is they know the drill better than I do, because I forgot to say, uh, please put in the chat your contact information. Uh, later today, I will email uh, a, a video recording of this and I will include the chat so people have your email, your phone number, your website, LinkedIn profile, whatever it is that you would like to share, please put it in the chat so everybody gets it. And also, by the way, since we have a geographically diverse group, uh, you may also want to mention uh, where you are geographically and, and maybe more importantly, if you can do business all over the US or even all over the world, uh, uh, mention that. Um, all right. And now we go to my good friend, Jennifer Lowe. 
It's actually Lau, Jennifer Lau. So I am in northern West Virginia. I'm about 15 minutes from Pittsburgh International Airport. Um, I have a company where I take on unique projects. Um, currently, I am sifting through a ton of electronic paintings for an attorney in Manhattan. So I'm curating art. Um, I was asked to do that. Um, it's a very, it's kind of a logistical nightmare because there's so many paintings and, um, and painters involved. But, um, basically I'm a writer. I do grant proposals. I do marketing. I just kind of do what interests me. Um, the health hasn't been the greatest, so I've been resting and I've just been trying to enjoy the springtime weather. That's all. Excellent. Very, very good. Thank you. Um, and next on my list, ah, uh, Mark Stovell from Canada. And I hope Hello. I pronounced that well. Yeah, no, Stovell, that's perfect. Um, yes, I, I come from Canada. Um, so quick background on me. I run an online CPA firm and uh, kind of going through a career transition. So I've been a CPA for seven years now and don't love what I do in public accounting. So I focus uh, primarily right now on, on taxes and accounting and we're kind of in the thick of tax season right now. And, uh, but I'm transitioning, my firm is officially for sale and I'm gonna transition to um, Profit Tuning, which is my new venture where I help companies manage by their numbers. Because traditionally my work includes accounting, bookkeeping, taxes, and then I'm done with the client. However, most of the growth with my clients is after that when we look at their financial statements, when we start managing by the numbers. And that's what I want to focus on. Financial literacy is a key for survival for small businesses. I help companies get into the cloud to transact online. And with COVID, that's kind of been uh, a very prevalent topic because people need to transact, purchase, as well as pay online. And scrambling to get online has, has, been, uh, has been a roadblock for many, many companies. So that's where I'm kind of sitting right now. I, I'm a creative trapped in a CPA professional's body. And I'm trying to figure out, you know, how can I use my skill set uh, for a more diverse uh, clientele as well as truly help people in their businesses. Paying taxes is a necessary evil and it pays my bills, but it doesn't really help a business owner. So I come, yeah, I'm just outside of Toronto, uh, Eastern, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, I have clients uh, in the U.S. and in Australia and, of course, in Canada. Uh, the ideal client would be, you know, a client that is pretty established looking to, um, you know, add more to their financial management side of the company. Uh, I know a lot of young entrepreneurs are just kind of struggling with operations and marketing and kind of the numbers is back there, but they don't really deal with it. So I help uh, clients bring those numbers to the front and start making decisions based on those numbers. All right, perfect. Thank you, Mark. Um, and I have a couple questions for you, but we'll leave it to the next part of the video here. Um, Stephanie, if you could take a minute or two, please, and introduce yourself. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Thank you. Uh, I was not here last time because of that, that the site visit, but we're really excited. But this is Stephanie with Exhibit. Uh, typically, when I speak with business owners and marketing coordinators, they are worried about hitting deadlines for the planning and set up their expos or events. They're uh, stressed about their lack of time for planning or just sick and tired of the complicated virtual meeting technology. So do any of these resonate with you? Some of you maybe, yeah. <laughs> but uh, okay, so here at Exhibit, um, we a lot of people know us as trade show marketing experts. And so when COVID hit, we had a lot of different things happen um, with events being canceled all over. So we had to kind of transition. And in the chat, I put a link to our B2B Expo NM. That is the live networking event that we host here in Albuquerque every year. So I'm in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I, I couldn't get my background up today. I don't know what's up with that, but usually you see the nice Sandia mountains behind me in the sunshine. But uh, here at Exhibit, we believe that finding a better way to market your business equates to not settling for the status quo, 
Uh, we excel at finding better ways to connect uh, with your target audience by creating visual solutions to your specific needs. How we do that is we get you unstuck and help you think differently about your marketing and how you want to be seen. And then what we do is determine the right way to reach your audience through design marketing collateral, digital marketing, or event marketing. Um, and so your success is our mission. And, and so as we go into the virtual realm, like I mentioned, virtual meeting technology, we can facilitate any small to medium meeting, conference, or expo that you need to have. We've done a couple uh, team building things with, with some companies. We're doing an education conference here coming up in April, as well as a UNM conference, which is another college conference. And then uh, some of the, the, uh, the things that we're working on is a larger government conference to help connect government and suppliers as well as a 911 communication in Texas. So we're working with them here this afternoon to try and narrow down those, those, um, those events. So that's what we do. I've been here six years. Uh, I come from a Hollywood video background. I worked with them for 11 years uh, before they shut down and, and, uh, and then worked for Village Inn restaurants in their local marketing with Bucky Bear and fundraising. But you know what, that's when I started to get to know marketing and DJ Heckes, my boss, she's she's a, an amazing mentor and got me a little bit more into marketing. So that's a little bit about me. <laughs> Thank you. All right, excellent. And let's see, next on my list here is Yona Khan from New York City. Actually, is it New York City? Technically, it is New York City, but I am from Brooklyn, New York, uh, so uh, which is a city on its own. In fact, it would, in fact, the borough alone would would be one of the ten largest cities in the United States. That's how large it is. Um, it's got close to two million people, so that's a lot. Uh, so I am a financial advisor out of New York City, and Mark, uh, you hit the nail on the head with the financial literacy portion of it, and. And I can speak more in terms of working with entrepreneurs. And if they would only know their numbers, life would be so much easier. But what I do is I help and empower pe people and business owners to make smart financial decisions by sort of educating them in sort of what's out there, what's available, and the value of a dollar. You know, while I may work with three core products such as life insurance, disability insurance, and long-term care insurance, it goes way beyond that. So for me, it is about knowing what your options are, knowing where you are right now, knowing where do you want to go, and no, and sort of having a plan of action of how to get there. Um, just wanting to get there is great. Just wanting to be a billion-dollar company is fantastic. But you sort of have to have a plan, and then. And you have to have ambition, you have to have a dream, you have to have someone who calls you a little bit crazy, but there has to be some sort of planning. And essentially what I do is I talk with people and I sort of fill in the gaps. A good referral for me would be someone who wants to have a conversation. Um, my business grows and I help other people's businesses grow by building meaningful relationships. So if it's through the products and services that I have to offer, or vice versa, or through referring you to someone in my network. If I can help you, I would love to be the one that helps. My contact information is in the chat box. And as I am usually the last one to go because of my name, which I which I blame my mother for, uh, Sal, I have to remind you to go. Uh, thank you, Yona. You're, all, you're always so kind because uh, he's absolutely right. Uh, sometimes I, I, I get so excited in, in these meetings and, and listening to everybody that I forget to introduce myself. So uh, first, thank you all again for, for joining me. Uh, my name is Sal Acosta, and I am a business broker, and it is exactly like it sounds. I help people buy and sell businesses. Um, anything that has 10 to 250 employees, anything that has zero to 10 or 20 million dollars in revenue and i know things are, are getting better but still a little sketchy there with the coronavirus but hopefully break even so you know at least zero to about a million or two in net positive cash flow for the year after expenses um i'm here in the pittsburgh area but now that everybody's gotten used to doing uh business over zoom i'm i'm helping people all over the country 
Um, so yeah, and that's me. And if you know of anybody that wants to buy or sell a business, please let me know. And same thing, I'll, I'll put my contact information in, in the chat and the email that'll go out later today and, and you all have it. Um, okay. I've unmuted everybody from my side. Has, have any of the introductions triggered questions? Barb. So I wanted to add some things to my introduction. <laughs> A um, couple things. I do have a YouTube channel that has uh, interviews uh, of other dating experts and other interesting people that I've interviewed. But on my Facebook business page called The Best You Dash Barbara Klein, and the link is on my in for the chat, um, I started a brand new series and it's called Seriously. Here, wait. Seriously. The, my um, my antics of a hundred plus first dates or first meets. So it's stories about uh, things that I experienced during my six years of being single and dating and the crazy crap that I experienced. So that just launched today. If anybody wants to watch it, you can. Um, so I wanted to share. Thank you. Oh, and I'm in Pittsburgh. I mean, I live in Pittsburgh. Right now I'm in Charleston, South Carolina, but I'm normally in Pittsburgh. All right, perfect. Any other questions for anybody based on the uh, introductions there? That's funny, Barbara. You said that's on your Facebook? Yeah. Okay, that's funny. <laughs> I'm happily married for almost 25 years now, so it's like... <laughs> So, I, but I, I like hearing stories of what people are experiencing. So I think that's pretty cool. Because <laughs> my, my my older son is dating. So. <laughs> but yeah. So Mark, little question about taxes. Okay. Speaking of my 21 year old, do I claim him or not? <laughs> I guess that's that's where I'm at. I do. I normally do my own taxes. Uh, well, um, I don't want to. I don't want to offer too much tax advice here. It can no. kind of hold me liable for certain things. No, but no, uh, I would, I would say no, <laughs> just given the you know circumstances. Does he have any income? He does. So I mean, we're yeah. we're planning on having him him uh, file his own taxes, and then I, I I think we claim him as a college student. So yeah, since we pay for his college, but. Um, yeah, so those are just some questions. You know, it's ever changing. You never know. The tax rules, they're constantly changing and you never you never know. Um, and it's gotten a little bit more complicated. So we we may end up getting our own tax advisor. But um, and, it's crazy. And that's and that's the reason why, you know, I'm not I'm not a tax specialist. I do, you know, personal and corporate tax. But that's the reason why I'm kind of getting out because it is changing. And, you know, 2020 with all the subsidies and changes is just getting too much. Mm -hmm. And I'm a I'm a process and um, operations guy, not a tax specialist. So I kind of have to pick a lane and pick a lane and go. And tax is not that one. So you said that you're going into the fine, fine tuner finances is this something that you're doing on your own do you have a have a partner with that are you going to need branding for that uh well i i dropped my email or sorry i dropped my website into the chat there um i don't have any partners currently i have a couple contractors and associates that i refer you know um special requests to you know sal it'd be interesting to chat with you a little bit more about um you know helping business owners get their businesses ready to sell. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't I don't have a lot of branding at this point. It's it's a relatively new venture because my firm is still going full steam. Uh, so in, until I sell my firm, uh, I'm kind of focused on that right now. But mm -hmm. I don't want to introduce myself as CPA looking for clients because that's not what I am. I'm I'm looking yeah. for, you know, business advisory consulting clients. That's good. Well, we do a lot of brand of branding as we've gone through this time. We've helped some companies with their rebranding logos and, and things like that. So as well as the trade show stuff and the virtual stuff that we do, we do a lot of design work uh, for marketing collateral and even logos. I love working with logos. 
And so it, it's one of those things that, yeah, just keep us in mind for any of you who need to rebrand and, and do that as well. So we design virtual and printed collateral too. Nice. Well, thank you. So Mark, let me ask you a quick question because I know uh, a lot of people that I run into do this. Um, and I don't know if this is something that that's of interest to you or, or even available in Canada. But, uh, oh, and I see Rebecca just joined us. So I'll, we'll give her a, a chance to introduce yourself here in a second. Hi, everyone. Hey, Rebecca. Hi, everyone. We'll Hi, Rebecca has to, arrived. We're just finishing up the, the round of introductions here. We'll, we'll give you a second. Where is the chat? Where is the chat thing? Um, it's right below where it says attendees. Okay. So now, um, how, do I, how do I send my information to, to people? Uh, just type it in there. Where? In the chat Type box. Where? I don't. Or it says okay. enter your message. Okay. Uh, so Mark, over there in, in Canada, did you have this thing? And here in the US, I think it's a franchise. It's called uh, B2B CFO, which is basically um, sort of a temporary C. It's a franchise that provides temporary CFO services to people. Um, so it's a lot of financial consulting. It's a lot of getting their, their books organized. Um, does, does that any of that ring a bell? And does that any of that fit with what you're trying to do? Yeah, that's, uh, that's part of the services that I offer with my CPA firm and that I'll continue on after I make the sale. Because that's, you know, as you know, there's a lot of capital changing hands over the next couple of years with lots of baby, baby boomers finally getting out um, and lots of, yeah, lots of capital um, Who is this talking? Uh, just lots of businesses changing hands. Um, there isn't, there are a lot of uh, fractional CFOs out there or yeah, B2B uh, CFOs that come in and do a project and then they move on. And I myself, I worked for uh, Ernst & Young, the big, one of the big national, uh, international accounting firms. And I worked in the due diligence group. And that's what we'd go, we do, we'd go in and do due diligence for, for the buyer and provide CFO services for, for the transaction and then move on. And uh, that's definitely, you know, in my wheelhouse because that's uh, that's kind of what I love. Oh, okay, perfect. Yona, did you want to say something before we give uh, Rebecca a chance to introduce herself? No, it's just uh, something that just came up a second ago. Oh, okay. Rebecca, do you want to take a, a minute or two to introduce yourself to, to the rest of the group? Sure. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Rebecca Watonsky. I'm a disability policy researcher for Griffin Hammes, which is a nationally known disability policy consultancy. I do uh, I research self-employment for the disabled and the blind disabled. Um, and I also do uh, social media research that's designed to help people with disabilities find self-employment and or uh, work employment. And I love my job and I want to, I'm very happy and I wanted to find more opportunities in this field at this point. I graduated from Brown and I'm also fluent in Spanish as well. So that's me basically. And I have, I put my LinkedIn number, my email and my LinkedIn number and my, you know, my email and phone number is all in the chat for everybody who wants to talk to me. Okay, perfect. By the way, did you have a chance to connect with uh, the lady that I was here? I don't know if it was last meeting or... No, I didn't. Who is that? Uh, Victoria Chan. Victoria Chan? Yeah. Okay, do you have her contact information? I do. I do. I'll send it to you if you didn't connect with her. Okay. She was the okay. one that... She's actually up in Canada also, and she was... Uh, I guess she still has a house in Texas, and she was doing... She's blind... And she oh, okay. was helping uh, other blind people over the internet. Oh, helping blind people to do what? Um, I think I'm not. It's, I think it was just like education, like basic education. Okay. And she's in Toronto. Uh, I don't know what part of Canada she was in, but I'll, I'll send you her information. I'll make sure you guys connect. That would be great. And Mark, are you in uh, Canada too? Yeah, just outside of Toronto. Which part? I have family in Toronto. Uh, I say just outside of Toronto, but I it's about an hour and a half northwest of Toronto. What's it called? 
Uh, I live in a small town. I live on, on a farm, but the closest city is Owen Sound. Okay. Same by okay. Yona. I think Yona know. has to take off, but very nice. Thank you for joining us. Okay. Bye, Bye Yona. Bye, Yona. All right, anyway, um, the floor is open for anybody that, that wants to ask any questions based on the introductions. Um, does anybody have any further questions based on the introductions? What did, what did Jennifer, what do you do? What do I do? Currently I'm curating an art catalog for some well-to-do uh, people in New York. Cat what type of catalog? Art. Oh, okay. Okay, you're in New York? No, I'm actually in West Virginia, 15 minutes away from Pittsburgh International Airport. Okay. I'm you... also a writer. I just take on random projects. I'm what what kind of writing? Trying to do a... kind of writing? Huh? What kind of writing? All kinds. I was a ghostwriter for years. Grant oh. writing, too. Technical. Okay, did you put your information in the chat? I did. Okay. So I can get it afterward and you're okay. Nice to meet you, Jennifer. Okay. Well, listen, now it's completely open for, for anybody that wants to talk about anything, maybe how coronavirus is going, where they're at, how they're seeing the, the economy recover. Um, I'm always curious to hear what, what people or how people see uh, the return to normal. I mean, is that like, literally going to look like 2019 is it going to look like halfway between what it looks like now in 2019 what does return to normal look like and, and especially by the way for for people that maybe used to work in an office building in a downtown somewhere do they go back do they stay home do they go back half the time what i'm hearing sell a lot through the trade show world is shows are coming back but they're going to be hybrid uh, you know, so what, what this has taught everybody is that there is the ability, there is the technology to be able to work from home if you need to. So if you have pre-existing conditions and things like that, those people are going to be staying away. Um, and, and what we're being counseled to do is they will be. plan these tra trade shows and things. Um, you have to be cognizant of what other people are feeling. Um, you have to be more aware of, of those those disabilities, those pre-existing conditions, those different things that are going to keep them um, from participating in some of those activities. And as we're talking to some of these conference people, they're excited because the virtual is actually going to increase their conference attendance, whether it be live or virtual, it's going to increase the attendance of who's going to be there. Like this 911 uh, commission in Texas, they they normally have a live event that has 100 people there. Well, they have 400 people that need to get this information. And so they're excited about doing this virtually because they can open that up to all 400 people and they don't have to worry about travel expenses and things like mm -hmm. that. So when you talk about a, a normal, I don't think we're going back to the 2019 normal. Maybe in some of the things we are, but a lot of people and conferences are looking at the virtual aspect of what they can do in their businesses now and what they're doing to save money in their businesses by having virtual. Now, so I think work out of the office, but my husband works at home, and his struggle is, is he loves working at home, but his struggle is that he doesn't, his office members don't get to see what he's going through every day, and they pile things on. He, you know, here where I'm in the office, my my other, you know, the other people that are here can see what I'm going through. They can see if I'm stressed. They can see if my desk is a mess. You know things like that and and i would love to work from home too i can work from home but that's not my preference so you prefer to work in an office yeah i do because if i'm home there's a million other things that can affect me. you know yeah. i i think okay i need to vacuum my floor my dog needs to be fed and let out my my sons are running around mom i need the printer mm -hmm. you know all of that and even my husband you know mm -hmm. i'm pretty good when i work from home i do have a home office that I can shut the door. And so when I do work at home, I do go in that office and I shut the door. And they know that that they better text me before they come through that door, um, that type of thing. So I can work from home. It's not a big deal to me. I'm comfortable, I've done it before. Um, but overall, I would rather be in the office. I'd rather have that camaraderie and that, that uh, 
that ability to to see what my coworkers are going through. Let me ask you this: since, since you work from home and even have your home office, but you're you're mostly in the office. When you work from home, do you feel like you miss a lot of like little impromptu meetings and, and work sessions? Do you, do you feel like you're, you're, you're missing on some opportunities when, when you're at home versus the office? Not now with Zoom. Um, before, yeah. Before COVID, I never worked on Zoom. I knew what it was, but I never worked on it. So what COVID forced me to do was learn the technology that I need to connect. Like, there's no way I probably would have connected with all of you if I didn't have this. So what I'm doing now is where I was farming, basically. I was the client relations specialist until COVID hit. Now I'm Buddhist since development. But before that, I would call my clients. I would email my clients, but I really didn't know who they were. So what this is allowing me to do now, even if I am home, the, the, the only thing that messes that up at home is the four of us if we're on our bandwidth is affected okay i have to end up kicking my son off and take the landline so you know i plug the landline into my computer so it actually works the fastest but other than that it, it's been nice to connect with people that i've known by phone or email or worked with but now knowing that i can work with a one-on-one -on -one face to face call i actually get to know them a little bit better it's a little bit more of a personal relationship um working into business but yeah, the only trouble I've had is the bandwidth. When when uh, when COVID hit, I was already working from home, and my team is already virtual, so we didn't skip a beat. And we actually saw an uptick in work in 2020 due to, you know, being able to engage with clients virtually from day one. Uh, so it was actually a pretty good year for us. But I do feel the same same. Um, issues because I can't see what my staff is working on and they can't see what I'm working on. It's nice, you know, I can kind of duck out and, and go spend time with my, I have three girls, uh, you know, during the middle of the day uh, while they're not at school. Um, but I can't really, I don't have a, like I can't put my finger on the pulse of, of how my staff is actually working. I can see, I can see their trackers. I can see their lists. I can see them checking off work, but like I do, miss a few of those impromptu like hey how's it going everything's business when we get on to zoom to right. chat about work it's all business mm -hmm. um but actually peering into each other's homes like into my own office there i look into their bedrooms or into their home offices and we talk about stuff in the back and that kind of breaks mm -hmm. the barrier about hey you know what's that on your wall let's talk about personal stuff but overall i think our personal relationships have been impacted for sure See, so there you go, Stephanie. Just stick a bunch of papers in the back when you're all stressed and you're overwhelmed. They say, hey, wait a minute. What are all those stacks of paper back there? Well, normally I have my my virtual background. You know that we 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 usually you see the big exhibit, our beautiful big exhibit logo, and and so if and and I haven't seen you on our virtual events yet, so I know that the timing is weird when it comes to all the different time zones, but. Um, Mark, another thing that we do is we host a virtual mastermind once a month, as well as a serendipity networking once a month. And so usually when I'm on Teams or when I'm on Zoom, I have a virtual background that has our branding because that that's what I tell people. Even though you're working from home and you're in a you're in a beautiful space, you can work there. Some of it needs you know you need to have your branding sometimes there too. People remember me. Sal, have you seen my virtual background? I think I've seen it in, in like them. network after work and things yeah, like that. Yeah, network after work. I know Barbara, you've seen. I know Rebecca, you've seen it. You were on one of our events, um, and so that that virtual background it has the Sandia Mountains behind it for me, and it's wonderful when I can say I move my head and I go see those beautiful mountains behind me. Those are the Sandia Mountains in Albuquerque, and in fall you see balloons everywhere. You know, hot air balloons. So, um, but yeah, I. I I agree. I would miss the camaraderie. I've worked from home before and I would miss the camaraderie and just that extra little step of visiting with people in your office. I think it, it helps with productivity. And so Stephanie, Barbara, I guess let me ask you a question on because some that Mark said triggered triggered a thought in my head because to be honest with you, I'm I'm kind of in the same boat with him in the sense that I'm getting 
more work because everybody's on Zoom and, in, and instead of being limited to like people within driving distance, um, I can do work with people in Florida and, and whatever, California, everywhere. From a dating perspective, have you seen people doing like like Zoom dating with people that are so far away that they don't know if how or when or they're, they're going to meet in real life? Um, or do they still stick to people that they think they can meet in real life? I think in general, the majority of my people that I speak with, they're doing a lot of virtual uh, dating with local people. Uh, people that they would normally want to have interest with um, that are nearby. Uh, so that eventually they can work towards meeting. Uh, I you know, uh, there's. I've been talking to some people um, over this past year. Uh, somebody who lives in Canada has been communicating with somebody that lives in the uh, one of the Asian countries, and so oh. you know that's just a preference for people. Um, but <clears throat> that you know that makes it so much harder. Obviously, traveling during COVID was not possible nor safe. Um, in regards to going to other countries, although people right. were doing it. Um, and also, um, you know, you have to have the money in this particular person, you know, finances are tough. So how's he ever going to meet this person who he supposedly cares for? So it's realistic to do um, Zoom. I also heard that Match has like a video chat now that they did not have before. They introduced that during COVID. So it gives people the opportunity to create um, a first meet without actually leaving their home, putting themselves in harm's way. And I will tell you based on personal experience, even if you meet somebody in a public place, you can still put yourself in harm's way, mm -hmm. um, which is one of the things I will be talking about on my um seriously <laughs> i have to do that as part of my <laughs> part of my shtick um but yeah through my uh seriously um episodes that i'm going to be talking about one of them is how guys felt that even on a first meet they had the um my permission which they did not to put their hands on me and i'm not talking about giving me a hug or shaking my hand so, yeah Definitely um, harm's way. So doing a first meet virtually actually is a really good idea. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Well, Thanks for asking. No, you're very welcome. Okay, guys, uh, we're going to go like just two or three more minutes just to, again, to, to get everybody out of here with with, with time to, to get a glass of water or, or do something before your, your next meeting. So is there any last question or, or topic or issue that anybody wants to discuss before we uh disband oh i will say this and hopefully you, you all received it and I'll, I'll i'll email it again uh but that everybody received the information about joanne forrester and the activity she's oh, okay uh, she's doing yeah, for women. Women's, women's. Of, no, I don't think so. i'm sorry who said no i don't get i don't think i got that and what's who's joan forrester Okay, well, don't worry. She's the, uh, we refer to her as the Empress of Biz. She's also the uh, president Empress of, of Biz, what does that mean? Uh, Women's Hall of Achievement, and, and they're putting together a virtual event here uh, for the end of March. So don't worry, I'll make sure that you all get that information um, no. again, so that you can. Uh, I just want to, I like, I want to just continue networking with people, and I love my job, and I just want, I'm very happy with my company. And I just want to continue to flourish in my company and to find additional opportunities in the disability policy space. But I'm very satisfied with what I'm doing now. And I still welcome additional options, but I'm glad to network. And as I said, I'm from Brown and fluent in Spanish. And I say, I hope people got my information in the chat, phone number, email address, and LinkedIn. Um, so, yeah. We did. I, I did see it come through. And I'll make sure everybody And Mark, you're a CPA? Are you a CPA, Mark? Yes, I am. Oh, okay. Yeah, I also have a degree in uh, taxation. Wow. But I, I'm very happy with what I'm doing now. 
Okay. Now, just Mark, just to clarify, so you are a CPA in the United States? Because I know, and also in Canada, do they call them like chartered accountants? Do they call them yeah. accountants over there? Yeah. So, so I, I am a, I'm a legacy CA. I'm a legacy chartered accountant. Uh, then we join. There's three other, uh, you know, I'm gonna say minor accounting designations, uh, CGAs and CMAs, and we all kind of were kind of uh, uh, forced to come together under under a new CPA banner. So I am a Canadian CPA. I do do work with U.S. CPAs kind of all the time. All right, well, guys, it's been wonderful. Remember, we're going to do it again in exactly two weeks. Um, I will send out the, the video recording. I will send out everything that was put in the chat. I will send out, just for kicks, uh, Joanne's information again. Um, Who is Joanne? I, I can see all of you uh, again in exactly two weeks. Just okay. to let you know, Joanne uh, did speak at our mastermind in um, in February. We are going to have her back. It's who's, either June or July. Joanne? So Joanne will be will be back presenting again for us. Who's Joanne? She's uh, Joanne Forrester. Okay, what does she do? Uh, she is the Empress of Biz, but she's also the president of the Pennsylvania Women's Hall of Achievement. So mm -hmm. so it's a it's a you know it's an organization that focuses on you know, women's leadership and and all, including historical figures, and they're putting okay. together um, a free and virtual event. And I think I'm going from memory here, it's March 27th, okay. uh, but at 7 p.m. Eastern. But I'll send out the information so you, everybody has it for anybody that, that wants to join. Okay, all right. Do, did you, do I have your information, Saul? I think I do. Yes, and I'll, I'll put it in the email when I send it out, too. Okay. Have a good day, everyone. Uh, nice to meet everybody. Have a good day. All right, guys. You guys all take care. Thank you.